Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, on this episode of Bullet Points this morning, I've got an opinion piece which is a perfect example of why we created the bullet points on this channel. Now, as you guys know, or if you're new, we dive into the opinion pieces because it shows you a lot about where the left and the gun controllers sit mentally and emotionally on this topic. And this article is no different. In fact, on this one, it's incredibly interesting because it starts out like a pro-gun rights article, but then does a quick turn once they say, hey, we welcome all conversations unless you disagree with me. This is very, very interesting, and to be honest, it's pretty representative across the board of a lot of gun control conversations that I've had. Everything will be linked in the description box below. I want to hear from you guys on this one because this is a, like I said, perfect example. I'm going to do a quick uh, read from our sponsor who made this video possible, and then we're going to hit it on the other side. I cannot wait to show you this because there's a lot of points in here which we can apply to further conversations. In today's increasingly dangerous environment, arming yourself responsibly and effectively is paramount in defending yourself and those that you love. Selecting a holster is an important piece of embracing your Second Amendment rights. LAS Concealment is here for precisely that purpose. With leading designs inside and outside the waistband options and combat tested by special forces and overseas operations and available in hundreds of colors and patterns, LAS Concealment has the right solution for you. Check them out in the link below and thank you so much to LAS for making this video possible because I can bring you things like this. All right, so as I said, Everything linked in the description. Check this out because I want to hear from you on this one. Opinion. Gun rights advocates do themselves no favor by not addressing gun violence. Now, this came out yesterday. Good rule of thumb. When someone who is opposing you says this is good for you, that's probably not great for you. Anyway, let's keep going. I want to show you this because this is truly important. Keep in mind, you're welcome to the table of conversation unless you disagree with me, in which case you are not welcome. It's very common. It's long past time for our political leaders at all levels of government to work to reduce this spiraling trend. The National Rifle Association and other Second Amendment advocates should lead the way. Now, right off the bat, what's the one organization and one group of people that the left gun controllers always demonize? Nonstop, no matter what they say. NRA and Second Amendment advocates. But let's keep going because let's just give them a benefit of the doubt that they're trying to bring us into the conversation. Check this out. Let's get a few things out of the way at the offset. This is the part where it sounds like a gun rights argument. Yes, the responsibility of these awful acts of murder and terrorism rests with the shooters, okay? Yes, it's inevitable that some situations will occur in any society with private gun ownership, okay? Yes, there are already laws on the books designed to prevent these tragedies that too often are not properly enforced. Okay, I got one more and then it takes a real hard turn. That doesn't justify turning our heads and looking the other way. The United States has had a mass private gun ownership for its entire history. Yes, that's true. It has not regularly experienced the degree of mass random situations that we see today. Also true. There were only eight incidents with three or more fatalities with 1982 to 89, an average of one per year. We averaged 10 per year from 2017 to 2019, events in which four people were shot more than doubled in just the past three years. That whole argument is the fact that guns have always been here, so something else has changed. That is a pro-gun rights argument, because it's obvious there's a different catalyst here. This is where it goes against the grain, right? They, they'll bring you in really gently and say, see, there's some very important things that we align with on you, align on with you. But here we go. Here's where the, the mocking starts. Claims that even more widespread public carrying of guns will solve the problem are simply laughable. You want us at the table. You admit all the things that we have said cons consistently are a contributing factor and evidence that need to be discussed. And you want us there. But the first thing that we say is, eh, it's laughable. You see, you see what I'm saying? It's like, get in here to the table, but only if you agree with me. I'm going to keep going. Left to fester long enough, such violence will likely force people to reconsider support for the Second Amendment itself and acquiesce in its judicial evisceration. Let's translate that one. So if this happens long enough, gun rights advocates, if gun rights are truly important to you, you better come to the table, or the Second Amendment itself will acquiesce in judicial evisceration. What that means is destroyed by the judiciary because the Second Amendment just shouldn't be here. That's what this person's saying but they welcomed us to the table. And never mind all the facts that they just said to bring you into the conversation, it's gonna, you know, it'll just fall apart at judicial evisceration, which is something that we are seeing. It's kind of reversing, but it is something we've seen. 
That is even likelier to happen if those who champion the private use of guns cannot bring themselves to condemn and limit their deadly abuse. That happens on the regular. In fact, every time the NRA puts out anything or any Second Amendment group that says and condemns that violence, it's always met with mockery and blame. We need to abandon or we need to repeal the PLCAA. It's all about profit over lives. Any of these things? Keep going. I got one more for you. We solved the epidemics of mass violence before. The confluence of alcohol prohibition and gang violence led to an epidemic of violence in the 1920s and 30s. The federal government heavily taxed fully automatic firearms and other weapons in 1934 in response as part of Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal on Crime. So what happened in this situation that they're referencing as a point that's of similarity is they created an artificial market by banning all, all alcohol. It made it a dry country, which fueled the, the demand which fueled gangs, which fueled violence. It was a government-created problem. The reaction was gang violence. They then took away guns, or at least part of gun rights through the NFA, due to that gang violence, and then they got rid of prohibition, but they left the gun control in place. Isn't that weird? And, by the way, side note, Chicago is still a cesspool. So, the whole reason I'm bringing this article is because it shows you Please come into the conversation. We want you to be in the conversation. If you really love the Second Amendment, you'll get in here. But the second that you get in here, we're going to mock you relentlessly. You're not welcome to the table unless you do, unless you agree completely with me. And by the way, the judiciary is going to eviscerate the Second Amendment, even though we're for it and we support it. But if you cared, you might as well just acquiesce because it's going to happen. It's really important to see what these are for what they are. Exactly. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.